Interested in getting your bench press, deadlift, and squat to skyrocket? Watch this. All right. Our first caller is Carter from Kentucky. What's up, Carter? How can we help you? Doing good. How are you all doing? Good. Pretty good. So uh, first off, I want to say thank you all for uh, everything you do. Uh, I've been lis listening to you all for about three to four years now. Uh, I'm a personal trainer and nutritionist, and I'm a little over uh, one year into my career, and you all have helped me tremendously. Um, I have all of the MAPS programs pretty much, and I use those for my clients and myself, and uh, they've gotten tremendous results uh, with those. So just to give you all a little background, um, I've been training for around five years consistently, and this year I would like to do my first powerlifting competition utilizing the MAPS powerlift program. Um, so my question is, uh, could I possibly implement uh, skills sessions kind of similar to the ones in the kettlebell for aesthetics program um, to kind of uh, increase my uh, volume and frequency with the deadlift, squat, and bench for extra practice. Um, I would implement these on the three non-lifting days during the MAPS powerlift program. And uh, would that give me any um, extra benefit? Uh, what kind of load would you recommend and um, how would that uh, kind of help me? Yeah, what a, what a great question. That's a good question. So have you done mass power lift or is this going to be your first time? I have. I've done it before in the past. You have done uh, it before? I have, yes. How did it work for you? It did great. Um, I increased my one rep max on my deadlift by around probably um, 90 pounds. Uh, bench, yeah. About 10 to 20 pounds. And squat probably around uh, 40 to 50 pounds. That's excellent. Incredible. So now, what makes you what makes you feel like adding extra stuff will make it more effective? I feel like the extra practice would be great. So kind of similar to how uh, sports uh, has skills practices. Like uh, I used to play basketball, for example. So um, we'd have practices before games that would walk through like drills and things like that. Um, and then we'd have like free throw skills practices, three point shooting practices. So kind of just to give me extra practice with the lifts itself and really dial in my technique. Yeah, you should know. Did you notice that he put 20 to 30 percent of one rep max, which I think yeah. is I mean, to me, that's the that's the move here. And I think his, his yeah. uh, application is is brilliant the way he's thinking. Yeah, I imagine I, the intensity. My advice would be different if you had not done maps power lift, because what I would have said then in yeah, that case would have yeah. been run through it first. And then see how it works for you, and then start to modify it based off of your individual body and results and how your body works. So I think this is okay. I is it going to improve your progress or speed up your progress? I'm not sure. Uh, so but my advice is going to be do it because you've done it before, you've got some experience, but pay attention to how you feel. If you notice that even at that low load, that it's maybe reducing your ability to recover because mass power lift is, is mm -hmm. all already programmed and planned out. Then I would take them out. Now I I'm gonna bet that it'll probably be okay. I think it mm -hmm. might help just with your skill and your technique uh, in each of the lifts, which is I think what you're you're asking about. Here's something cool, yeah. by the way. A little side note: they did they've done studies on athletes where they'll have them. For example, it was a free throw study where they had athletes just go through a free throw in their mind versus athletes actually practicing a free throw. Now the people practicing the free throw free throw did better. But the people envisioning the free throw did way better than people who did none of e either one. So that's another thing that you can do that really doesn't take away from your – potentially take away from your ability to recover. You're not going to get any overuse injuries. Just by going through lifts in your mind, envisioning how it feels, what it looks like, it makes, it, it makes a, a, a big difference based off of you know the studies that I've seen. But I would say experiment with this. But play, pay close attention because what you don't want to do is get trapped in the cycle of, well, I'm doing this. Even though I'm not progressing, I'm going to stick to it. Yeah. So you, you got to be ready to switch gears if you need to. Yeah, you got to definitely manage uh, appropriately the intensity. So I, uh, you know, I'm glad you're already thinking in 20 to 30 percent kind of range. However, you know, this might actually affect your other workouts as well. You know, having increasing the volume there and the frequency. You know, it, it it may it may start out as a good thing in terms of you know you being more um, being able to get into the groove you know more effectively you know your technique might improve actually technique will definitely improve if that's the focus of it and the intent um, I would just really 
really be honest with yourself and, and see if you are progressing or if you're not. And so that that's definitely like intensity wise, you know, something you might need to adjust uh, even with your regular work. Yeah. Is this a raw competition or is it equipped? I would most likely be using a uh, bell, um, knee sleeves and wrist wraps. So uh, raw. Yeah. Okay. So here's, here's another thing I would do on these practice sessions. I would literally practice with the 20, 20 to 30% load. Okay. I would practice uh, like you're in the event. So while you're in there and vision, you're on, you know, you're all, you're ready to perform, getting into position. You've got the belt, the wrist wraps, everything. Cause the goal, uh, based off what you're telling me, and correct me if I'm wrong, the goal is for you to really perfect the technique and the form for your performance on, you know, game day, so to speak, right? So I would treat it like the competition with that light load, get into position, envision yourself, people watching, you got the judges, mm -hmm. you're in position, get real comfortable with all the equipment that you'll be using, your positioning, you know, get as close as you can to the competition itself. That should, that could squeeze out a nice, you know, few percentage more increase in your performance. Listen, I, Carter, you, you sound like a smart guy. I, I love this. Mm -hmm. I I I think uh, I think you're on the right track. I think the way you even presented it in the the full written question with the idea of going at twenty to thirty percent your load, uh, you've already ran through power lifts, so you know what type of gains you should expect and how you should feel. So if you're overreaching or doing too much, you're probably going to know better than somebody who's never ran the program. Mm -hmm. You've got a training background. You've been an athlete before, and you've and you've applied these principles in basketball and seen probably your skills get better. I 100% think uh, squatting and def deadlifting is major technique. Uh, most of the gains I've got over the last five years in those lifts, it's been because of the technique, not because I built a bunch more muscle since then. It's just been getting better and better the technique. And if you, like Justin was saying, if your intent of going into those extra workouts is set like that, that I'm not here to work you know, out. Yeah. Crush it, which uh, you, 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 you get it because you you yeah. uh, you have done yeah. this in basketball. You're, you're in the right mindset, right? When you when you did free throws and practiced your your three ball at, on those skills days, I know you weren't running lines and like killing yourself. Like that's not the the idea of that practice. So you get it. That's the same concept here, and I love this. And yeah. I think you're a perfect person to uh, play with this and apply it because you've already been through it and you have the, the knowledge in the background. So go for it. And I'd love to hear uh, what, what yeah, you- Yeah, I'd love the feedback in, as you go through this too. And also to, you know, even consider like some of the sticking points is where we can, you know, work on addressing those types of things sure, and, yeah. and um, you know, you know, place like deficit deadlifts or do things where, you know, uh, if, if that initial, if that initial bit of force is the problem, you know, to get, to get it off the ground or, you know, whatever position it's in, like really hyper focused into those sticking points definitely yeah so would you all do a uh, one day two day or three day kind of approach to this or would you do a squat bench deadlift day just for this specifically just really light load because it's practice and because it's technique uh i and i would and this is your first powerlifting competition i would i would make it look like the competition mm. itself so mm. you know which lift goes first i, I I'm, I'm not familiar right so squat. Right, so you do a squat, deadlift, bench, or is a squat, bench, deadlift? How do they do it? It's a squat, bench, deadlift with three attempts each. There you go. So I would practice like in that order, that. Yeah. and and do that and practice each of them each time because the idea is to get better at those lifts with your technique. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Thanks love for that. calling in. Yeah. Thank you all. Such a great uh, question. I love the way he set the table. I couldn't help but. I was laughing over here when you were giving the. I'm familiar with the the study you were talking about. Where yeah. Because all I'm picturing is somebody standing over a barbell but not doing anything and just oh. envisioning <laughs> yeah. how ridiculous Shana, like that is. Like it's seriously. I get I get the point like yeah. of that. Well, well, my my goal but, was to say <laughs> besides psychology. besides know, this, no. Also go through your head. Right. I get what, yeah. I get what you're saying, yeah. but I couldn't help but think of like a kid hearing that advice and going like, oh, okay, well Sal says I don't need to do it. I'll just no I'll just I think about that. it. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just think just about it on the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, it sounds ridiculous. I wish it was that easy. Uh, yeah. but, no, I mean, but it, it plays it, it plays a big role. No, no. I mean, side, and yeah. if you're if you're a fan of sports, uh, you know this. Like uh, they talk about this a lot. Like especially now, like we've yeah. we've we're there now, right? We've we've realized like how important that your mental state is and the ability to see yourself making the shot before you shoot the shot and things like that. So this was I totally separates the elite athletes. Yeah, you totally. I totally. You know that actually. Like I don't know if I told you guys this, but like what's something that curry did in the last year is like 
they uh, they shrank the size like his oh, shot the rim. Yeah, for him to be it has to be a perfect Smart. shot and how it goes through. Oh, that's great. And he envisions like this, you know, nothing but net shot Very always smart. and uh, hitting the rim is a it's a fail. It's right. A, and mm -hmm. so he just practices. Wow, and practice. and that's really good. Does mental exercises with that, like the the effort that he puts yeah. to being the greatest shooter of all time is is crazy. Well, you know what what I liked about this question is it really highlights uh, what we've said many times on the podcast, which is our programs are a really good template and the base. But the ideal program for you is always individualized, always. So follow our programs one time through as we've laid it out. And then once you start to kind of figure things out for yourself, you can go back through and start to change things and individualize things for your body. Because an individualized, personalized workout program is always going to outperform one that's one you know general for a, a large audience. I feel like that was the the best and only the, – the really important question that needed to be asked that you asked. Yeah. Because had he said, because everything else was set perfect, sounded like a perfect guy to play around with this and test that out. But even with his experience and knowledge and his idea, if he hadn't ran it one time no, through. No, I'd be like, do it just to slide out. Because yeah, here's the problem with that. Exactly. You don't have a baseline to, like, right. let's say he would have got, let's say it was his first time and he saw 80 pounds on his deadlift and you know, 10 pounds on his bit. He would go, oh, that really worked. Yeah. But mm -hmm. had, he didn't know that the last time he did it without doing any of that stuff, he saw even, even greater better gains. Right. right. So right. I, I think that's the thing that we always try and tell anybody that's running our programs because you get this, especially from trainers a lot who think they know everything, right? That, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to do, I'm going to add this with Right that. out the gates. Yeah, right out the gates. It's like, wait a second. If you haven't followed the program to a T first, do that just so you can get a baseline and then you can play yeah. with it. And a big that. part of the performance on com competition day is how comfortable you are competing. It's a big, big thing. So the visualization, the practice, what, it, what your goal is, you're aiming to do two, two, two different things. Get your technique so good that it's second nature. So even though you're nervous, anxious, whatever, your technique's on point no matter what. And then number two, desensitize yourself to the stresses of competition so that when you do get in the competition, you've got less of that stress response, which screws people up all the time. I can't tell you how many times that happened to me where I'd go and get on the mats uh, during practice and I could, you know, I could go through 10 guys, no problem. Then I'd go in competition and I'd gas out after the first match and it's because of the anxiety and the stress and the excitement that I just wasn't used to. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.